Yeah, the, the first meeting my dad was in was in uh, February, I believe it was February the 9th, 1951, at, uh, I think it was Calvary uh, Temple in Los Angeles. And dad was living in Los Angeles at the time. I was born in 53, so this was in February of 51. He had moved to Los Angeles after the war. He's from Southern Illinois. Both of his parents died. He moved out to Los Angeles, living alone, and was raised Baptist. But he had seen an article in the paper, an advertisement to go to Brother Branham's meeting, and he thought that that sounded interesting. So he went to Brother Branham's meeting, and it was the night after Congressman Upshaw had been healed. And Brother Congressman Upshaw gave his testimony. And my dad heard that, and my dad, but it, on the 8th of February, Brother, or Congressman Upshaw had been in Brother Branham's meeting after having been in a wheelchair after a farming accident that he had more than 60 years previously. I think it was like 67 years earlier when he was 14 years old. And his entire life he had been in a wheelchair, became a famous person, became a congressman, was even going to run for president at gunpoint. point. And it was, he was way up in his 70s when he went to Brother Branham's meetings. Brother Branham saw a vision of him, called him out of the audience, saw him standing. And he told him to rise up out of the wheelchair. And he went around the world giving his testimony for a few years. But my dad became friends with him and, and his wife and my mother also. And they were married in 52, and they visited in their home. Congressman and, Upshaw. Co Congressman Upshaw. Yep. And even if uh, my, I was born in July of 53, and I was dedicated at uh, the World Church. It was O.L. Jagger's ministry that my parents were attending services there, and I was dedicated there. And in my baby book, the witness is Congressman Upshaw's wife. Wow. It's written right there. And so so they were visiting back and forth. I don't remember her. I think by the time I was old enough to remember, she'd moved or something. And, but, uh, and the first meeting that I remember going to Brother Branham's was in, in Long Beach, California, when I was about seven years old. And, but this time, and my parents often attended Brother Branham's meetings when he came to town. My mother had ha didn't have any other children. A number of doctors, I think five doctors, had told her she could not have any more children. She had some problems with the womb. And my dad had been in a, in a very bad accident, and uh, he had a couple of slipped discs, and I remember that he would roll on the floor at night trying to straighten out his discs. And he had been thrown from a, or he was driving a concrete truck, and the road had given way, and he jumped out of the window of the concrete truck. And, he was sailing through the air with the truck. And he survived that, but he was always in pain. And when I was a child, they, I had a big raised birthmark here that would fill up with pus and it would turn all black and, and blood. And, and um, the doctors had told my mother that when I got older, they could get, operate on it and remove that and put other skin there or something. And But they took me to Brother Branham's meeting when I was a, a a year old, year and a half old. And he just laid his hand on me and said, God bless the baby, and that went away. Within two months, it was totally gone. Praise the Lord. But they, both of them being sick or having problems, they never, and being in many of Brother Brennan's meetings, they never got a, a prayer card and never saw it. And I've asked my dad about it. Why, why didn't he get a prayer card? And he said, well, it just seemed like there were so many other people that were in so much worse shape than he was. He was working and my mother was fine and she just couldn't have any more children. And so they didn't do it. And it was now uh, February the 8th, 1964. And we lived in Los Angeles and we went up to Bakersfield, California for, for Brother Branham's meetings up there at the Kern County uh, Fairgrounds. And before we went there, we stopped at a, a, a restaurant a Kentucky Fried Chicken restaurant. And there was a man in line next to us when we were standing there. And he was talking to my dad, and he was also going to Brother Branham's meeting. And he was, he was, had something wrong with him. And 
something wrong with his stomach, I think it was. And so they talked a little bit, and then we got to the to the fairgrounds there, and it was a big auditorium. So at least 2,000 people, maybe more, were in that meeting, in those meetings there in Bakersfield. And so we sat right in the middle of the auditorium, and there's just people everywhere, all around us, but it, by, by coincidence, but of course there's no coincidence with God, it just so happened that Mrs. Upshaw, Congressman Upshaw's wife, was sitting directly in front of me. So it was me and my mother and my father, and she was right in front of me. And they introduced me to her, and they were so happy to see her, and, and she was happy to see them. And so Brother Branham preached uh, the token in Bakersfield that night. And the first person he called out of the audience was that man that we had met in Kentucky Fried Chicken. He said, there's a man sitting here by the name of Mr. Price. And um, how do you spell that? I think it's P-R-I-C-E, Price. And he's suffering in the stomach. And he said, stand up, Mr. Price. And Mr. Price stood up. And my mother looked over, and it was the same man. And she said, that's the man we saw at the restaurant. And immediately, Brother Branham wheeled around, and he said, there's a, there's a man sitting here. Here's a, there's a, here's a fine contact of faith. That's what he said. Here's a fine contact of faith. And uh, there's a man by the name of Mr. Flanagan, and he's suffering in the stomach. And he's, and, uh, in, he's also suffering in the, in the back. That's thus saith the Lord. And that's your wife sitting there next to you. She's suffering too, and it's in the womb. That's thus saith the Lord. My mother, of course, was just screaming. And you can still hear her on the tape. If you listen to the tape, you can hear my mother scream. And uh, yeah, she's just really screaming. So they were healed that night. And, uh, but I was thinking about that, how that, and I think Mrs. Upshaw had said that it was 13 years. It was 13 years to the day that her husband had been healed in Brother Branham's meeting. Once again, February the 8th, now 13 years later, 1964 from 51. And she's sitting right there with us behind her that she knew my parents had been in each other's house and visited. So when he called my parents out by name, she knew who they were. I mean, she'd just been talking to, and here was on the 13th anniversary of her own husband's healing which was a tremendous healing. I mean, it was just a very famous kind of thing. And so uh, I was thinking how, how that must have been so exciting for her, so exciting. And uh, so anyway, the, the, thing, the interesting thing is that my dad, that I know of, he never suffered in the stomach. When Brother Branham said about Mr. Flanagan, suffering in his stomach and in his back. His back definitely had been in that accident. And what my dad was, I, I never asked him about it. I did ask him about, well, what was he, was he praying for healing or anything at that time? And he said, no, not at all. He was just praying because we were receiving the tapes at that time and listening to the tapes and he was praying, dear God, I know that this is your prophet. This is Elijah the prophet, Malachi 4, 5, and 6, Revelation 10, 7, Luke 17, 30. And I was just quoting those scriptures, and that, and that's what Brother Branham said. Here's a fine contact of faith. But he, he never ever said anything, and I never asked him about the, the business of the stomach. And I, my dad, I mean, you know, I, I'm sure he would have said, well, if Brother Branham said I was suffering in the stomach, I was suffering in the stomach. I just didn't know it. Because there was a lot of times he'd call people out with cancers, and they didn't even know they had cancer. I mean, it was very, very common that people don't know what kind of, illnesses that they have. Or the doctors. Or the doctors or anything. <clears throat> but still, I, 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 I so often wondered about that and myself. And then, of course, I was suffering so much in my stomach and I had ulcer. And it was, I was taking this horrible medication. And I got to think, well, you know, my dad wasn't the only Mr. Flanagan sitting right there. <laughs> I was sitting right there, and I had stomach problems, and I had them then, and then I all the way through. And, and I, I wanted to just claim, because Brother Joseph was talking about how that Brother Branham, he's preaching these sermons now for today, right now. Yeah. 
and here I am, you know, I can claim this. I am <laughs> David Flanagan. <laughs> I can claim it. And I am Mr. Flanagan. So 50 years later, or more than 50 years later, I claimed my healing. And so I just, I changed my diet and, and got on that keto in it. And I, I am healed. I haven't, I, and since then, in six months now, more than six months, it's from June, I'm off all medication. I was taking uh, the Somoprazole previously, Ratatodyne, it's all stomach medication problems. I was taking Alka-Seltzer almost every day, uh, several packs of Alka-Seltzer, and Levothyroxine for the thyroid, and I'm off. I'm not taking any medication. I'm totally, totally drug-free. And I'm feeling so much better, and I'm giving the praise and glory to God. Amen. <laughs> there, that's it. Yeah. So then, um, so your your dad, that was brother Tommy Flanagan. Yeah. So, what was his? What was what was it like to to be around your dad when he was witnessing all the time, trying to win souls to the Lord? Oh yeah, he was one that really that his whole life was dedicated to giving out the message to. To strangers and, and he was fearless on it and especially one-on-one -on -one, he would talk to people he would talk to anyone and many many times people rejected him entirely but as he got older and an older man walking around people would take it from him more and he seemed like he he felt like God would draw him to various people and he brought many and he gave out many and I remember every day he'd come and say well I had 12 different people I gave out the message to, you know, to 10, 7, 6, but usually it was around 7 or 8, you know, or 1 or 2, but but every single day, consistently for year after year after year, and uh, I mean, I, I once made a calculation of it, it was way up in the thousands, I don't know how many it could be, but of course, you know, and Brother Billy Paul once told me, your dad gives the message out to more people than anyone that I know of. He said, you have ministers and stuff, and they preach to a group, but the, you know, they're preaching to their congregation. And they, your dad is out going to truck stops and, and restaurants and different places, and wherever he is, he's, he's at Walmart. He's just standing in line. I mean, just constantly giving it out. And it, it's, uh, it's, and many of the people that he gave out to, maybe gave out to others and if you could count the number of people that came in under his his ministry there it must be a tremendous number even uh paul branham's wife uh she came in under my yeah, dad yeah. yeah brother marconda came in under my dad yeah, uh, yeah I, I remember when dad gave brother marconda the tapes my, my mother had some relatives who were visiting us in california and brother branham was still alive at the time and uh, so my dad was, uh, we went over these, these Italian people's house, uh, Brother Marconda and his parents and my mother and them, they were all sitting around talking Italian and my dad, he didn't know any Italian and Brother Marconda started talking to my dad and my dad immediately started telling him about Brother Branham and gave him a big sack full of tapes, those old reel to reel tapes that he had out in the car. He was, we had the big wool and sock recorder in the car, he'd plug it into the cigarette lighter and listen to the tapes. And so he gave Brother brother Marconda, and who at the time he was a businessman in Los Angeles, had had, had money and he got himself a, a recorder and he and my dad started going to to the to the messages together. A lot, a lot of different places. They'd come to Phoenix and go to Brother Brown's messages and just before my dad passed away, Brother Joseph had uh, played uh, Birth Pains. It's one of the tapes he had chosen to play one, some, one, one night or one, one Sunday. And uh, Stefford would go over there and, and then let, let him listen to the streaming and listen to the tape. And when she put on Birth Pains, he said, I was there. I was there when, when Brother Brandon preached it. So... It was something that he, he remembered that right away. Yeah. 1965, right? Birth pains. It, it was probably in 65, yeah. 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 Wow. Yeah. Well, praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother David. You're welcome. <laughs> All right.